Hi, Cooper. Nice to uh, see you and talk to you again. I know you uh, obviously developed a pretty strong uh, relationship there with, with Colby Cave and, and the song that you put out uh, about a month and a half ago. What did it mean to wear his, his number today and, and to salute uh, Emily in the corner there? Yeah, it was amazing. I think it was a tremendous honor for all of us to, uh, and it was a great idea from the organization to do that to honor Colby. And um, it meant a lot to all of us and just saluting um, Emily and her family and knowing and letting her know that we're playing for Colt, we're playing for her, and we're so motivated and excited to get going, and his legacy is living on. The next question, uh, Jim Matheson. Uh, Jim, as soon as your microphone's on mute, you can go ahead, go ahead. Uh, Cooper, you uh, you're had some injury problems last year, but it looks like you've, you've, you've recovered, and how do you felt during the training camp here? Yeah, I felt great. Um, last year was definitely a year of adversity with injuries and whatnot. Um, but you can do one or two things with adversity. You can, you know, play the victim and uh, and complain or whatnot. But I just tried to do whatever I could to get back and and healthy and worked worked super hard to get back here. And um, I'm thankful for the opportunity. And every day I've just been coming to the rink and I'm doing everything I can just to show everyone what I can bring to the table. And um, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, next question, Rob Tichkowski. Rob, go ahead. Uh, hi, Cooper. Uh, so tomorrow you guys will all move inside the bubble, and I, it's some pretty weird circumstances that brought everybody to this point. But at the end of the day, it's, I guess, a, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity or adventure, however you want to look at it. What, just from a human being standpoint, what are your thoughts as you, as you prepare to, to move into this uh, hotel for what you hope is a couple of months? What do you yeah, miss? I think it, it's something that – all of us are going to remember for the rest of our lives. It's something that's so monumental and everybody's worked so hard these last two, three weeks at uh, training camp and um, everybody's been really grinding hard and getting ready for this. So we're not taking it lightly. We're not going in there just to um, just play games and have a good time and whatnot. Everybody's going in there to win and have a mindset of giving everything we have. So everybody's so excited about this opportunity and we're going to take advantage. Uh, next question, uh, Quinn Phillips. Go ahead, Quinn. Hi, Cooper. Um, I'm just wondering what the reaction has been to the song and if you have kind of any of the analytics, you know, how many downloads, listens, that kind of thing. Yeah, the reaction, uh, first and foremost, the song was only really initially supposed to be for Emily and her family. And she loved it so much and her family loved it so much and it gave her quite a bit of peace and um, she really enjoyed that, and that's what the primary objective of the song was. But I think she and her family wanted the whole world to see and hear Colby's love that he had for Emily and just the man that he was. And it's been a tremendous reaction. I think you see people all around the world inspired by their story and, and Colby and Emily and their, their love that they had. And the numbers have been great. I think uh, just over a month, I think it's like 65,000 uh, streams on Spotify. Like. Uh, around there on Apple Music, a ton on YouTube. So it's really making an impact on people. And like I said, first and foremost, it's making an impact on Emily and her family. And that, that was the goal of the song. Uh, next question, Ryan Rashog. Ryan, go ahead. Yeah, hey, Cooper. One of the things I remember Jay Woodcroft talking a lot about was that every time a player would get called up to the National Hockey League from the minors, that the group was always really positive and, you know, you were cheering for one another and pulling for one another. I wonder how that might apply to this situation where you could have guys going literally weeks and weeks and weeks without playing games, only practicing, and maybe how that staying together mentality can apply to this situation. Uh, and then secondly, just wondering if you're bringing anything musical with you into the bubble. Yeah, first of all, I think that um, maybe if our little group here isn't whoever's not playing the games, we're going to be competing as hard as we can each day on the ice. And me personally, I have the mindset of expecting to play at any time. And if not, then so be it. And I think everybody in the locker room has that mindset. Whoever's not in is going to, you know, just try to compete every single day. And if the opportunity comes, then great. And we're going to be ready. And I know I will be ready. Um, so that's something that myself and I'm sure everyone in the locker room is focusing on right now. And also, yeah, I think uh, I, I have a guitar that I'm going to bring in there for there'll be a lot of free time. So um, I know the guys talked about maybe getting together once we're allowed to and 
playing some music on off day or whatnot. So um, we're all looking forward to that. And uh, yeah. Uh, next question, Jim Matheson. Jim, as soon as your microphone's active, you can go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Cooper, I think you've been playing the wing here, not center. Is that unusual for you? And the other question I have is, is the bubble anything like uh, an NCAA Frozen Four where you're hanging around the same hotel with the players and trying not to, to even notice them if they're in an elevator? Yeah, it is. Uh, it, it is very similar. I mean, the, the same kind of thing where we had, uh, uh, I actually was fortunate enough to be in the Frozen Four and whatnot. So that was a great experience for us. And yeah, you're going to be around other guys. It's going to be weird that you're competing against them. But um, I think everybody's just laser focused on, on the objective. Um, and to answer your other question, yeah, I, I mean, I, I feel very comfortable playing both positions. I don't mind it. So um, I think I like to have that versatility there. I can play wing, I can play center, wherever I'm needed. So, yeah. Next question, uh, Rob Tichkowski. Rob, as soon as your microphone is on, go ahead. Uh, hi, Cooper. Just one more. I'm just curious uh, how a guy spends his last day before going inside. And once you are inside there, what, what do you think you're going to miss the most? <laughs> yeah, I don't think anything crazy. Just going back, uh, making some food and watching some stuff on YouTube, Netflix, uh, maybe read a little bit, play some music, nothing crazy. I, and I think, you know, all of us, it's not going to be really that much different being in the bubble because we've all been quarantining and whatnot this entire time. So it's not going to be too much different. Um, I, I mean, guys are going to have to find stuff to do, but at the end of the day, we're here to win the Stanley Cup and that's a primary objective. And although we can't, have that freedom of doing whatever we want, going wherever we want, seeing wherever we want. At the end of the day, if you can hold that Stanley Cup up, it all, it's all worth it. So we're, we're really excited about this opportunity. Uh, next question, Daniel Nugent Bowman. Daniel, go ahead. Thank you, I just want to circle back to the stuff that we talked a little bit earlier about uh, Emily and Colby. And uh, Emily was saying uh, yesterday that she uh, – has a, a gift that she was going to give uh, all the players on the team. Just wondering if you've received that yet, if you could share what it is. And also, what, what does it say about her moving to Edmonton to kind of uh, run this memorial fund in, in her late husband's name? Yeah, nothing yet on the gift. Um, I'm sure in her timing, we'll get that. I'm not sure exactly when that'll happen. Um, but yeah, I, I think it just, it speaks to her character and her, her passion to not just let Colby's legacy just 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 fade away and whatnot um she's so passionate about continuing it and making an impact with his name and she's so passionate about that and i know that his legacy is going to live on for all the things they're going to do for underprivileged kids all the things they're going to do in the hospital emily is I, I she's a strong one of the strongest women i've ever met in my entire life i don't know how she's battling through this but she still has a positive outlook she still has a positive attitude and She's going to do such an amazing job of continuing Colby's name and making an impact on so many people. And I know Colby's looking down, just has the biggest smile on his face. I'm so proud of Emily. And like I said, she's the strongest woman I've ever met. 